Okay. So, hello YouTube. I'm going to try and demonstrate hacking a drill motor for use in robots in real time. Uh, this is the Craftsman 19.2 volt cordless drill motor. Uh, it is a... Uh, well, we'll see what's inside in just a moment. But uh, the process here is we're going to tap out these holes in the front for uh, 1032 set screws and that will lock the clutch. Right now that's just free spinning. So step one is we will... I'll show you what's uh, the tools needed first. So there is the drill motor. Uh, there is a bottle of Loctite, a Phillips screwdriver, or a power screwdriver with a long extension so that it can get get in past the motor. A rag, a hex driver, I like the T-handle, and the eight set screws, I use 1032 and then a matching tap. So to prep, I'm going to put drop of Loctite on each screw. Side. Now to open up the drill, I will use another drill. I use this old school Black and Decker. So the gearbox cracks open with just three screws. Pinion there is a uh, nine teeth, four, six, eight, nine. I believe it's a uh, sintered uh, heat treated steel. Uh, this motor also has the added bonus that the back cap is uh, metal. Some of them are plastic, and I've had the uh, bushing back here uh, overheat and melt, so that's nice with the metal back there. Unfortunately, the timing is advanced on this motor but uh, most of the better quality ones are. So uh, after breaking the gearbox open, I just dump out the gears. So uh, these are two stages of planetary production gears. So there's a ring gear with these castellations on the top. There's a, um, a first stage input gear. The pinion goes in the middle there and uh, rotates these. You can see the uh, first versus the second stage is a little thicker. I think these are um, these are like three millimeter, these are maybe four millimeter. I haven't measured it. Um, this particular one, it appears that uh, both of these are uh, heat treated, probably sintered again. Um, and the other feature that this gearbox has that some of the uh, less expensive cordless drills do not is uh, this uh, last stage output carrier is made of uh, a slightly uh, better quality steel. Hopefully these pins uh, do not loosen up, fall out, or shear as easily as some of the um, cheaper drills. Alright, so now that this is uh, open and free uh, going to tap out these holes. So I take the cordless drill again and put the tap in the chuck like such. Set the clutch somewhere in the middle so in case it binds up it does not uh, threaten to snap 
tape. And to snap the uh, top in any way. All right, so I usually go from the inside out tapping, and I just uh, run it run it through. And just go around doing all eight. Okay, now the uh, bonus of going from the inside of the gearbox out is most of the chips end up on the outside of the gearbox and not caught up on the grease inside there, but there's usually a few, so I usually just take a swipe, swipe around and, and take this grease that has maybe a few little bits in there. But anyway, all right, so now that this is tapped, we will reassemble. And uh, some people leave this assembly. Um, you, you can drop these this, this whole thing out as one chunk and drop it right back in. I usually take the time to drop it in piece by piece just because. Uh, so first, ring gear with castellations down. Then the thicker, thicker planet gears. It drops in like that. Lastly, drop in those. Cat back on. Um, align the there's a hole tab. Pop those back together. And the last step is take said Allen wrench and said screws and thread it into the tapped hole. So I go until it hits the ring gear and gives just a little bit of uh, tension and then I back off something like an eighth of a turn. And I just repeat that process, and I, of course, uh, uh, insert the screws in the star pattern for no particular reason other than just because.
So you can, of course, uh, just force these screws right in. You don't really need to do the tapping, but it's just one of those uh, little extra steps I like to do. Uh, you'll, if you plan to use these gearboxes, you will be, have to become intimately uh, familiar with how to assemble and disassemble these things. So I consider it just good practice. Now, of course, one of those set screws walked off, I think, onto the floor. So, uh, that's okay. We can fix that in post. So anyway, um, ideally what you're trying to do is you're trying to park these set screws um, with the castellations trapped in between so that the ring gear has just a little bit of play. And uh, that, that little bit of slop um, goes... Uh, helps to keeping this thing uh, from working, uh, from not failing, anyway. Um, so that's all for this video. Uh, in the next video I will show how to mount it on the ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene mounts and mount the uh, top hat hub and probably put a Colson wheel on that and then you have a ready-to-go uh, robot drive motor for 12 through maybe 60 pound robots. Righto-oot!